All right, what's good, everybody, man? It's your boy, Architect Nice in the building. We is back again with another one. All right, man, another week, another Coach Prime press conference, man. Now, we are heading into week 10, talking about the Boombox Classic, and he's going to talk about this week's game coming up, man, and he heading down to Houston. So, we're going to find out what he has to say about Southern and what he had to say about Texas so heading head into this week. So let's get it going. Let's see what he had to say, baby. Let's see it. Coach Prime. I'm trying to get somebody to fix it. What's going on? I need to see the people. <laughs> How you doing? Good morning, Coach. How you doing, guys? Good morning, Coach. Sorry. I'm a little tardy. I'm in the middle of a shoot, but you guys come first. You have priority, and I am apologize. I hope everyone's doing fine. Um, let me get to business. We had a – first of all, I don't really condone Halloween, but happy to whatever you celebrate today, but it all, it's all good. Okay. We had a wonderful um, game on Saturday, uh, a day that – Jacksonians would never forget a day that the SWAC would never forget a day that our people came together as one. When I uh -huh. got up there on that stage and saw the cheerleaders from Southern and so many people from Southern there and our people from JSU, it was phenomenal. It wasn't just a black thing. It was a white, black, Hispanic thing, Asian thing. It was a, just a thing. And I'm so elated. First of all, God gave us grace gave us grace because it was supposed to be 90 percent chance of rain from 3 a.m all the way through and god graced us all the way into the second half so i'm mm. appreciative and i'm thankful okay. because i wanted everyone to see how we could pull together and how the city of jackson could be a wonderful host city for college game day and we were all of that i thank you all for your coverage for your kind words for the hospitality for the just the love that you showed us I really appreciate it. Jackson would never forget it. I would never forget it. I was almost in tears when I rode through there on my athletic cart, seeing this moment and getting up there on stage. Uh, unbelievable. Undarn believable. Um, went on to the game. Uh, defensively, we played well. I trust our defense so much early in the game. I went for it on fourth down and an opportune place, but then it's time to discuss that kind of stuff. We, we go over all possibilities throughout the week, and I let them know I would try something like that just to get our offense uh, jump started. But the defense played a great game, shut out as normal. Shut uh, down. Shut out. Shut meaning, down. Shut them out by blanking them. But they played lights out football. Statistically, I think we reached some wonderful points. I think we're still the number one defense. Uh, uh, can you give them those statistics? Because I want them to hear that. Read them. Some people take that for granted. Yes, number one total defense, number mm. one passing defense, number mm. one scoring defense, mm. first third down, fewest third down conversions allowed, mm. first and fewest first downs allowed. Amen. All right, four or five thing right there. So offensively got off Sheesh. to a slow start. Then we crunked that thing up. Uh, we dropped, I think, several passes, which is not indicative of who we are offensively, but we came on with it. Shador had some wonderful runs, which is – uh, unlike what he normally does, he's a, a passer, but he can run, but we don't like him to run because they ain't but one Shador Sanders. But he uh, yeah. did his thing. Uh, we got great uh, product productivity from our backfield. Our line was ready and going, and they was doing their thing. Special teams played well. I, I feel they played well. We didn't have to rely on them as much. But the kickoffs, the punts, uh, everybody, special teams did did a wonderful job. Great team, well-coached team. Uh, they stayed in character, which I love, and we didn't have any nonsense on the field or off the field, which I adore, because we had to put our best foot forward, especially when we were on a national stage. Let's open it up, guys. Good Here's statement, Coach. Coach. Good statement. Good statement. The question goes to Charles Bishop. Good statement. Coach, how you doing this morning? Great, sir. Hey, you covered so much in your opening statement, but I wanted to ask this question in regards, especially to the offensive line play. From a perception standpoint, the past two weeks, uh, uh, most prognosticators have thought that uh, you were going against a more uh, physical uh, defensive line. But talk a little bit about the offensive line play over the past two weeks, another game where they yeah. rushed for over 150 yards. 
Yeah, I get bothered by that because people always talk about the physicality of the other team. I never hear them talk about the physicality of our team, especially defensively as well as offensively. Um, we, we have two ways to beat you. You can sit back there and drop seven uh, if you want to and, and take Shador away, but then you're going to have to deal with the run with your front four. And we are very, very physical. Physical. Our guys get into arguments when we call a timeout because they want the ball ran their way. That's the type of energy and the physicality that our offensive line possess. Um, as I alluded to earlier, we have several backs that can get the job done, and they got the job done. Uh, I'm sure we hit our – I'm, I'm just upset, but I, I think uh, Mr. Wilkerson had only a couple yards away from getting 100, and I wish I knew that because we would have made sure he got that because mm -hmm. that's a, uh, another feather in his cap. But those guys work their butts off at practice, and they want to be rewarded in the game, not by the accolades, by coach running our way. That's the, the verbiage we get when it's in a timeout, and I, I'm sure. proud of that. Sure thing. And let me just say something about that, too, because I'm not going to lie. Going into the Campbell and Southern game, I thought that, you know, those were going to be their two biggest tests in terms of what Jackson State was going to face on the defensive line. Because, and especially with, you know, with Campbell, how big their their O-line and D-linemen are, and with the speed and quickness on the defensive line that, you know, along with the strength that Southern has. And Jackson State took care of both of them as if they were nothing. You know, especially with, on the D-line with Jordan Lewis and Jason Dumars and Trey Lane. Like, they, I mean, I... Outside of Trey Lane with him having, you know, a sack in two chapters for laws, they primarily did, did nothing, honestly. Like, they were they were really, you know, the, the old line of Jackson State was really physical. And that's something that they didn't have last year. So, Jackson State honestly did a really, really good job with recruiting because it definitely helped them this year. All the problems that they had last year, they don't have them this year. So that's why they have the record that they have. That's why they're undefeated, man. Like, dog, Jackson State is just, man. Like, what, like, what can you tell? I want to ask about the special teams. Several uh, kickoffs that uh, were touchbacks. Uh, you've talked about Alejandro Mata and Sam Johnson's will as a punter. Talk a, bit, a little bit about, about the special teams play. That's hard. Uh, Coach Ricard is doing a wonderful job. Uh, we, we not criticize, but we own him the most because he's he's funny and he's hilarious and he's straight energy and profanity. But it's hilarious. Um, he tries his best not to use profanity to either. You know, I really don't condone it, but he is so fired up and so into it that he's chosen uh, a group of guys that that have sacrificed and and they go down there trying to knock something out. I mean, they're doing a great job, but our kickers, it all starts with our kickers, the long snappers. It all starts with those guys. Uh, my man Mata gets a lot of the credit, but I'm telling you, uh, uh, the, all those guys have done a wonderful job. Our special teams have been stepped up 100%, and that's one of the reasons why we're undefeated right now. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate Mata's, been, Mata's Thank you. been on the Next money. Next question goes to Kendrick Marshall. He's been – Yeah, Coach, um, in the opening statement, you talked about the scene in Jackson this weekend with game day being there. Mm -hmm. Pretty much sold out crowd with the Southern fans coming down from Baton Rouge. With the attention you guys have gotten this season from the mainstream press and the success you guys have had the last couple of years, especially as you're going undefeated, um, how do you and your coaching staff keep your kids grounded? Because a lot of teams could, Good question. could see all of that and I like that question. They're really better than they are. How do you keep them grounded and not falling for the rat poison, if you will? Well, one thing you got to understand you guys may not expect the success that we're having, but we do. So when a guy expects, um, get what they expect. It, it, it's kind of unthinkable that they could um, kind of get beside themselves and start thinking too highly of themselves when you already expect that. The guys who think too highly of themselves and get beside themselves and this overtakes them, those are the ones that have never had success. They don't understand what success is. They don't know how to equate success or handle success whatsoever. And we do a good job every morning in the meetings. We give them words and we give them videos and we give them a whole lot of structure on how things look and how it's supposed to be. They will have three words a week that we just hone in on and, and, and just feed them that every darn day, accompanied by video, accompanied by a, a speech, accompanied by some thought process that they got to understand this is really what it is this week. And they already have those three words for this week and they're going to be prepared. All right. I like that question that he asked. 
because I kind of wondered about that too. Like, you have not only these guys that are 18, 19, 20, 21 years old getting a lot more attention than the average teenager in the in a young man. And especially with with a lot of their guys being transferred, guys who probably didn't get a lot of playing time or didn't get no playing time or probably got in trouble, wherever they came from, they all came in one place and probably didn't think they would get the attention that they're getting now. But you got to remember, man, like, who knows how, like, like, because Jackson State is the hottest thing smoking in college football right now, who knows if they stayed where they're at, if they would be receiving that much attention. You know what I'm saying? So you're talking about your home crowd, you're playing in front of 40 and 50, 55,000, you know, crowd every week. It's like, there's not there's not too many people that's going to be grounded to, you know, or that's going to think about that and be grounded enough to where they're going to keep their composure. Especially with a guy like Travis Hunter, who is going to get, who, he has a YouTube channel right now. And he's about to get 100,000, 200,000, a million subscribers within the next two or three years. Because he's that popular. And I, and, you know, and people already call him like the next, the next Deion Sanders because he, he can do it all. You know what I'm saying? So, and it's good that they're, that they're playing for Coach Prime, you know, because he's the guy that did it. He, like, he's one of the few guys that did it in two sports, you know? So, but that was a good question that, that he asked, man, because, Dog, the attention that they're getting, man, it got to be rough, especially for their mental health. Like, they're, like, they have to be mentally strong for a kid to to have that type of pressure. Because God forbid if they lose a game, if they lose a game at all this year, the amount of beating that they'll take on Twitter or any social media site, you got to think about that, too. Quick follow-up said, um, Coach, how much does it help you guys that everything you guys do is, is filmed either b by your staff or the school staff or just, like, you guys are always out there in the public eye? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. our staff is the school staff. Um, let's, let's get that straight. So when we're filmed, we, every, before I got here, everyone from the HBCU um, family was talking about lack of attention and lack of focus and and, and, and lack of uh, visuals. Well, we give them that. We give them that. But that's the only uh, difference for the quality of living and exposure. Okay, we're going to try to our best to step up the quality of living. We, we give them three wonderful meals a day contained with just football only in our own training table. We created that atmosphere. A lot of the guys are in apartments, um, a multitude of endowment. We got to up that. You hear me talking about that all the time. And, I'm doing a better job with housing. But other than that, we just got to give them the exposure they desire. We um, This year, we, we're doing another documentary on Prime Video. Thank you, Sam. You're a good man. I don't care what nobody say about you. You're a good man. Aaron in December, he's telling me. Aaron in December. So they're getting the exposure they desire. And that's why the lights don't blind us. The lights don't affect us. Um, one of the, the greatest moments of last week, to you, it could have been a multitude of things. To me, it was after the uh, multiple thunderstorms and we went back out there and there's barely anybody in the stands. It was just like practice for us. We don't give a darn about a hand clap, about a you go boy, about nothing playing in the background. We work like that at practice. So that's what it felt like. It felt like, <laughs> hey man, that's not, I'm not downing Southern by any means. I'm talking about our thought process where nobody's there. That's how we practice, full speed, a lot of tempo, and we go at it. So I love that moment. All right, Coach, thank you. I appreciate it. And, thank you know, and that's good that, you know, that Coach Palm, you know, gives Jackson State that exposure and keeps, like, he keeps Jackson State visual at all times. Like, I'm talking about every day. Like, even when they're not practicing, whether he's in the training room, whether they're in the library, whether they're on the practice field, whether they're in, they're in his office, he keeps Jackson State visual each and every day. 
And honestly, if a t kept themselves that same exposure, I think they would be right where Jackson State is. Honestly. Like, because you got to think, man, yo, a t were, like, they were, like, I'm talking about between 2017, 16 maybe. From 16 up until 2019, couldn't nobody touch a t Like, couldn't nobody touch them. And I just think that if they kept themselves, like, visual, like, to the public eye each and every day, like what Jackson State is doing, I think a t would be more of a powerhouse. And I think they would be they would be talked about a lot more. You know, and, you know, I mean, look. And, look, who knows if 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 a t will get back to that point. But, I mean, or how long it would take before they get back to that point. Because a t for those three or four years, they were, they were really the HBCU team to beat. Like, can nobody touch them? So, you got, like, you really got to give props to Coach Prime and where he has put Jackson State in in, in the amount of two years. Just in the, in, the, in the amount of two years where he put Jackson State at. And I think that's very commendable, uh, very commendable and it, it can't be ignored, bro. But, the, but that's why you see all of the Power 5 schools are trying to get at him. And you, and you see what Auburn trying to do, right? Y'all see what Auburn just did? Auburn just fired their coach, and they just put Coach Prime at the top of the list. I think they try to – I've seen millions out there. I don't know how many millions, but they're trying to put some millions on the table. And Coach Prime did say that he would entertain it. He did say that. But he ain't going to work. He ain't going to work no time soon. Like – the vision, like the vision may be far away, but it's still so close. Like he, and he's on the right path of making his own millions from the ground up, damn near. You're talking about a Jackson State team who goes from nobody being talked about to them primarily becoming a power five team of their own. Big 10. You know, so he know what he's doing, man. Thank you. And he knows exactly what he's doing. We're to get two more questions in really quickly. Next one goes to Kyle Mosley. Hey, Coach. How you doing? How you doing, sir? Good, good. Congratulations on your win. Uh, there's plenty of excitement here in Houston that you guys are coming to town. Uh, mm -hmm. Each town is ready to welcome Jackson State. But I need to talk about two players uh, that have – been performing very well for you. That's Wilkerson as well as Aubrey Miller Jr. Yes. Yeah. Talk about how those guys have really been uh, steady for you throughout the season. Talk about it. Well, let's start on the defense side of the ball. The defense really sets the tone for our entire team. Whenever we have the opportunity, we put our defense out there first um, when we win the kickoff or whatever that may be. Um, Aubrey is one of the guys that we hang our hats on in the middle of the defense, making calls, getting to the ball, flying around, really setting the tone and the tempo, not just on game day, but at practice as well. He's matured a lot. He's grown a lot. Still, you're going to see some um, foolish penalties here and there. That's just Aubrey. Um, we could <laughs> deal with that. We're not going to condone that, but we could deal of with course, that. Yeah. But deal with the that. guy plays his heart out. He he goes about his job really professionally and hard, so he's, he, he's going out there doing what we think he should be doing on the other side of the ball to have a running back who's consistent. And I truly mean consistent with the way he practices, the way he goes about his job and he's physical. He could run by you. He could run through you as well as catch the ball out of the backfield. I'm really pleased with those two men. They seem like they have the same tenacity, just one being an offensive player and one other being a defensive player. Awesome. See you Saturday. Good luck. Thank you, sir. And that's why, like, that's why the 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 new the new ad of Wilkerson was so big, and that's why and that's why everybody was so high on Jackson State getting him because, like, it was rumored it was rumored to, uh, since he left Delaware State that he could have on his way to Jackson State, but he ended up going to West Virginia. 
You know what I'm saying? But you but you gotta think, man, like this dude really, honestly, he really changed life for that, you know, uh, for that Jackson State uh, offense. Like he gives, like he gives that offense more, uh, more, more balance. You know, he he really compliments the offensive line and how physical they are with him being physical himself. You know, and he really takes the pressure off of Shador Sanders, like. Even though he throw like he throws the ball thirty or forty times, they know that he don't that they don't have to throw the ball all the time. Like even when Shador Sanders is off, you can literally count on Wilkinson to get the job done. And he's really, really been a force since he's been inserted in the starting lineup. Like like he like he really matter of fact, ever since the Tennessee State game. Like he like he really made a mark for this team, man. For real, for real. So shout out to Wilkinson, man. And then Aubrey Miller. You know what I'm saying? Like the dude, like dude's been a monster. Dude's an NFL prospect. Like he he's out of here. You see, he's out of here. Like he he he's gonna be first team all conference. He's probably top three and you know, uh for a uh, swipe defensive player of the year. Like he like he he's out of here, man. Like what? Like ain't nothing you can really say about him. He's out of here, for real. He's Last question here. goes to John Bryce. Hey, Coach Prime. Thanks again, as always, for the time to visit with you. John Bryce here from Football Scoop again. Hey, real quickly, um, you guys are number five again in the top twenty-five in the FCS coaches poll. Three of the teams in front of you have a single loss. So how much did you wish, or, or is it something you're already addressing, that your team could be in the FCS playoffs? That that's something that you would like I to don't. see. I don't wish that. Um, I'm happy with the Celebration Bowl. I'm enthusiastic with the Celebration Bowl. Um, the Celebration Bowl, what they do for us financially is far greater than what the uh, FCS College Bowl game could would do for you. Um, I don't know if we have the resources to travel uh, consistently for three or weeks or however long it takes to really be the champions of that. Um, everyone would love to see us play. I would love to see us compete against one of those schools, but financially, I think we're in a much better place at the Celebration Bowl playing in front of our people as well. I'm truly happy and elated. And I don't really get too much on the rankings and all that. I, who's who's doing the rankings? I don't even know who's doing the rankings. Uh, really, I don't. And I don't I, – I, I've never addressed our team once by saying, guys, guess what? This week we're number five. I've never done that, and I don't think I ever will. Um, we have a laser focus. We can't wait to get down to Houston to do what we do. We can't wait to get down to – the practice uh, tomorrow, the day's an off day for the kids. Uh, we're going to go tomorrow and go hard and be ready because we're going to lie. There's a lot of Davids out there with some slang shot and some stones. I appreciate it. And then real quickly, my follow-up would be, uh, we see you as a full-time coach. You said you're at a video shoot right now. You mentor mm -hmm. these guys. Uh, you speak on faith to these guys. How do, yes. you find the, how do you find the time in the day to do all this? What's a typical day like for Coach Prime? I get up at 3.45. I'm in the car by 4. I'm probably at the complex by 4.35, 4.40. Going there and get my workout in, I'm probably done by 5.25, 5.30, something like that. Come in, prepare my word for the day if I wouldn't, if I didn't prepare it for um, the day, the prior day before. Find videos, find anything that that, that is in my spirit about where we are, lo where we're located spiritually, physically, uh, um where our kids are located. Um, I don't come out of the office probably to seven. We have a meeting at seven fifteen. My meeting starts at probably seven oh nine, seven ten consistently. We go out there, we pray it up, we uh go over film, I give them the word, the thought of the day in front of a, a plethora of cameras, and I go in there and get my foot done, come back out while the kids are meeting, go back in there, watch a little more film and get ready for the day's practice. Uh we're probably on the field from eight something. We have a walkthrough, I think, at eight. We're on the field from probably eight thirty to ten, uh, if that long. And we come back in, then the day really starts. Then that's when the day really starts. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I've just gave you a glimpse of the early part of the day. <laughs> like that. I appreciate. It. I appreciate your graciousness. Thank you. I understand. So look, look, he said it. They're not look. So we can kill our dreams about us seeing them in the FCS playoffs because it's not happening. You know what I'm saying? And look, that's something that we have to respect, right? We have to respect that. Now, then the thing is, right, 
if you were Coach Prime and you're hearing all the talk, like, oh, y'all can really compete in the playoff. I think y'all can win a championship. And I believe that they believe that too. But when you're in his shoes, right, you're going through paperwork. You're going through, you know, through the financial paperwork or whatever. You're seeing statements, and you're looking at, and you're looking at it, and you're, and you're be like, even, even if we, even if we go into the FCS playoffs, and we win it, we have to play three or four games in order to do that, and we most, more than likely, gonna have to travel to about two or three games in, in, in order for, in, in order for us to do that. Now, how much is that gonna benefit our our you know our big account or how much is it gonna hurt? So you gotta figure that's where their mind is. Like they really wanna do all they can to help them save money, which is the reason why they put out of the Southern Heritage Classic in, in, in the first place. Like they were like they knew that they were in a bad contract, and even though they have two years left on it. They said, forget that contract. We're not honoring that. We're going to get out of it as soon as we can. Regardless of how much money we got to pay to get out of it, we're going to get out of it because we ain't we ain't earning nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, look, you, like, you got to love his mind, like his business mind, like how and how he takes care of his kids, man. Like, you got to love it, bro. Like, he, he he's the man. He's the man, man, <laughs> for real. So, y'all love Coach Prime, man. You, he, man, Coach Prime's a guy, guy.